This was a 40-year-old male who was referred um, probably in November of 2008 and following a routine referral by his general practitioner with uh, symptoms of tiredness and lethargy. Uh, he was referred as a routine, routine patient with sleep apnea syndrome and that, uh, and on the face of it, he fulfilled all the criteria for that. He was uh, male, he was uh, of the right build, uh, he gave a history of heavy snoring and tiredness and lethargy and on the, on, when we checked him against a sleep uh, questionnaire, he had a very, very high score. He scored 20 out of 24. So on the face of it, this is a barn door case of sleep apnea syndrome. But there's just something slightly different about his history. And this is the fact that he had quite uh, severe headaches. Now, we can anticipate headaches in approximately 30% of patients with sleep apnea syndrome, but these headaches seem to be a little bit unusual. They were much more severe than I would have anticipated. And then going through the history, obviously one was slightly concerned that there's something else going on here and slightly something more amiss than just simply sleep apnea syndrome. And when one went through things carefully, obviously one, there are lots of causes for headaches. You can have brain tumours, migraine, uh, various endocrine problems, hormonal type problems. And, but something, was, uh, something didn't ring true with, with that. And normally in the chest clinic, which is this is part of the chest clinic, we see patients uh, with quite severe lung disease. And these patients, uh, at, at the extremes of the lung disease, they have problems exchanging air, and, and that means they, they cannot take oxygen into the, into the body and they cannot expel carbon dioxide. And these patients, at the very end of their lives, have problems with carbon dioxide buildup. And I suppose it was a little bit of inspired uh, clinical judgment and natural thinking that I thought perhaps there's something else going on here, and I thought of carbon monoxide poisoning. And this is a very, very difficult uh, condition to diagnose because the symptoms are often very nonspecific. Uh, term flu-like symptoms, so you can get nausea, headaches, dizziness, a little bit of confusion. And when I started inquiring about other family members, whether they had any similar symptoms, uh, it, it, it was obviously the case that there was a problem obviously with the whole family, but obviously Peter seemed to be the worst affected. And obviously what I in fact asked him to do immediately is to go home, turn off the gas boiler and call in the emergency gas services. And when the, the gas people came round, the Transco, they actually, and the gas engineer, they'd actually, they actually identified a serious problem with uh, Peter's boiler. Uh, I think the inlet had been blocked, I think actually by cat hair and cat fur. But um, they're quite clearly they spent four hours trying to service the boiler. And I think in no uncertain terms, the gas engineer said that. And, and you know, if he'd left the boiler on overnight, then the family would have effectively been wiped out by the poisoning. Such were the level of the severity of the toxicity of carbon monoxide being pour, poured into the whole house with all family members affected. Carbon monoxide is a gas. It is tasteless, colourless and odourless and is formed due to incomplete combustion of um, gas and carbon fossil fuels. Um, the problem is that it's unrecognisable by anyone. As I say, you cannot see it, you cannot taste it, you cannot smell it. And it probably accounts for 50 UK deaths per annum. But the big problem is that there are probably a number of near misses, so it goes unrecognised and undetected, both by the individual and also obviously by the, the doctors themselves. Often the symptoms are flu-like and patients complain of sort of non-specific symptoms of dizziness, headaches, sometimes abdominal symptoms. So it's very easy to attribute all of this to sort of winter type flu. Um, but it obviously, if you can recognise it, can diagnose it, you can obviously avert all these fatalities. Carbon monoxide is heavily taken up by the lung uh, into the red cells and it competes with oxygen for a place on the red cells and with haemoglobin. The big problem is, of course, is that um, it prevents oxygen being released to the tissues, the vital tissues, the, the, the organs such as the brain and the heart muscle. So effectively, the whole of the, the, the tissues within the body are starved of oxygen and predominantly the brain gets affected and of course as you can imagine that as the oxygen is deprived from the brain then patients effectively become more asphyxiated complaining of symptoms, drowsiness and eventually coma and death.